Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo, two men in monk's cassocks moved silently down the stone passageway of Old Hill Monastery. They opened and closed a heavy Gothic door and walked across the carpeted room. One of the men removed his monk's robe, revealing the uniform of a colonel in the British Army. Nearly 12 o'clock, Baxter. Yes, Colonel James. Better do a round. Take a walkie-talkie and report back. Very good. Baxter helped himself to a walkie-talkie from the cupboard and left Colonel James to some paperwork on the desk. A short while later, in the passageway beneath, Baxter paused at each of the monk's cells. They were all heavily bolted on the outside. For Old Hill Monastery was a prison for captured spies. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers. Once an OMO user, always an OMO user, because it gets out the worst dirt and stains. Mrs. Francis of Port Elizabeth found that OMO cleaned her husband's bathing trunk. He used to come home in the demand and sludged with tar and uh, oil from our beaches. Well, he wanted to throw them away. So, well, he'd throw them over and have them goggles over. And then he would go and get the tar and the oil from our beaches. Well, he'd throw them over and have them goggles over. And then the next day they were shimmering high again. Goldwater OMO cleans best. Over a million South African housewives have proved it. Wall's Ice Cream presents the new Pink Pussycat song. We dropped your bread and in a cup and hop. That's a new sight. White milky chocolate is the way you like. All over the outside, we're Wall's Pink Pussycat. Uh -huh. Episode one of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel celebrate a little too soon, and an enemy makes a killing and a clean getaway. <laughs> Old Hill Monastery is a small but formidable Gothic structure with battlements and turreted windows. It sits sedately in the fields near Marlow and commands a clear view of the Thames. To the inhabitants of nearby towns, it is thought of as a closed order of holy monks. But it is staffed by highly trained army officers and contains over a hundred of the most dangerous captured enemy agents in all England. Lieutenant Baxter, pulling his monk's robe more tightly around him, moved down the passage, looking in at each of the grills. <clears throat> There's Dorf. Yes, he's reading as usual. Lubin, playing chess again. <laughs> oh, a man can play chess against himself, beats me. Who wins? <laughs> uh, Rostov. Rostov. Rostov? You hear me? Show yourself. Baxter, peering into one of the cells, was unable to see the inmate. Without hesitation, he switched on the walkie-talkie and reported the fact to Colonel James. Back to the Colonel James. Back to the Colonel James. Come in, Baxter. What is it? I can't see Rostov in his cell. You think he may have passed out in the bath? Maybe. I can't tell for sure. I can only see the frosted glass partition. All right. Well, you'd better carry out a routine thickness check. Baxter immediately removed the monk's robe and took a service revolver from its holster. Ready when you are, sir. Give the password. Apricot. In his office, Colonel James leaned forward and pressed a button on the panel. The bolts on cell number three slid back automatically. Baxter squared his shoulders, tensed his muscles, kicked open the door and entered the cell in a practiced rush. Let's have you. Baxter, confident and alert, peered around the cell. He moved across to the bathroom. It was empty. So was the rest of the cell. Quite empty. The figure of the prisoner seemed to appear by magic through the wall. What the devil? <laughs> 
Before Baxter could recover from his surprise, Rostov landed a terrific blow, knocking him over the table. In his office, Colonel James heard the sound over the walkie-talkie. Baxter! Baxter! What's happened, Baxter? Alarm! Sound alarm! Rostov! Taken my... my gun! And escaped! Colonel James moved like lightning. His hand went out and set the alarm bells ringing. Instantly, from all over the monastery, men began running at the double to the cell. There! There he goes! Get him! Rostov, at the end of the passageway, whipped up a few warning shots and raced for the next corridor. But there's no one there. Just, just a blank wall. He couldn't have got away. It, it disappeared. Steed was having a party in his apartment. It was a small reunion. Steed had two old pals, fellow agents, Paul Ryder and George Neville. The three men were in dinner jackets. Mrs. Peel was with them, wearing a stunning full-length gown. It was all very smart and select, and it had got to the last drink and cigar stage. Oh, indeed. Did you ever get to see anything more of that admiral, what was his name, uh, Pepe Chap, heavy breather? Oh, surely that description can fit any admiral in the British Navy. Well, I'm not quite sure who you mean, Paul. I want to propose a toast. Oh, you must remember the old boy. A toast, a toast, a toast, I insist. All right, a toast. To our benevolent host, the man you can always trust, the man you can always rely on, to the man with... With the wooden leg. Eh? Steed hasn't got a wooden leg. Have you, Steve? Uh, if you have, I must say you can't off very well. I'd never have guessed. <laughs> Admiral Corman, that's who I was thinking of. Ah, yes, Corman. Yes, of course I remember. I give you John Steed. Oh, glass is empty. Oh, let me. <laughs> Thanks. John Steed. Yes, John, John Steed. Steed. <laughs> and another toast to John Steed's partner in crime. I must say, Steed, you certainly know how to pick him. She's delectable. She's delicious. She's, she's also a dab hand with a caviar canopy. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, I give you Emma Peel. <laughs> Emma, Emma Peel. Peel. Thank you. Uh -huh. And another turn. No, 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 no. It's my turn. To Paul Ryder and George Neville. We trained together. We fought together. And I hope we'll remain together for many years to come. Steve drank and shattered his glass in the fireplace. The simplicity and sincerity of his speech moved them all. Out of a pause, George Neville said, Oh, dear. Gone all solemn. <laughs> Positively sepulchral. <laughs> <laughs> That'll never do, will it? No, because we, we've never been solemn. Not even in the tightest spot. Not even during the EBA. Do you remember that? Oh, yes. The EBA. Ah, the EBA. The EBA? European bombing attack? The exploding bootlaces affair. Uh, then there was the DCP. DCP? The Diabolical Cipher Plan. And the GAP. Fill that gap in for me, will you please, see? The Great Assassination Plot. And what about the GTR? Ah, oh, yes, well, yes, the GTR. Well, we couldn't possibly overlook the GTR. The great train robbery? Uh, Granny Titty Feathers Rum, homemade. Uh, kicked like a mill. Mm, fortified us during the dawn vigils. Yes, and uh, talking of dawn, I think it's time I was off. Oh, now, one more, surely. No, it's gone five, you know. Five in the morning? Oh, it can't be, surely. Mrs. Peel moved to the window and drew aside the curtains. The cold light of dawn flooded into the room. Down in the street, the mews was deserted. Well, it's home with the milkman, then, isn't it? I think I'll walk. It's not far. It'll do me good. Well, thanks for everything, Steve. Next mm. time, my face. Goodbye, Emma. Great pleasure meeting you. See you all again soon. I can let myself out. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, old chap. Bye. Well, how about you, George, old man? Well, I'm very easily led, and the prospect of an even five minutes more with the delectable Mrs. Peel. I agree. Another bottle? Well, thank you both. I'll join you. Mmm. <laughs> delicious. Champagne at dawn. It's quite the nicest time. Mrs. Peel looked down into the street and saw the stocky figure of Paul Ryder walk down the mews in the direction of the park. She didn't see another man standing silently in the shadows watching Steed's apartment. Some time later... And now, I really must go. It's been a memorable night, Steed, made doubly memorable by your presence, Mrs. Peel. Why, thank you. And, as Paul says, uh, we must 
All do it again very soon. Mm. Uh, that is, if enemy agents permitting, of course. <laughs> well, that's always true. Look, sure I can't run you somewhere? Carlton the garage won't take a minute. No, 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 I won't hear of it. I'll grab a taxi at the end of the road. Ah, yes, the coach. Bye, Emma. Stay beautiful. Uh, bye, Steve. Uh, call you later in the week. Yes, do that. Bye, George. Oh, I'm tired. A hard day's night. But I like them. I like them both very much. And so do you, don't you, Steve? Mm, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for them. They're two of the best in the game. Don't come any better. Even Mother has to admit that. Mm, I suppose you should have invited Mother. Well, but my best champagne. There wouldn't be a bottle left. Well, there's not much now, is there? <laughs> no, so we'd done... better finish it up, hadn't we, Mrs. Peel? <laughs> Down in the street, George Neville turned up his coat collar against the chill dawn and quickened his walk. Near the corner of the mews, he stopped. A voice from the shadows said, Neville, George Neville, here. What the devil? Neville took a pace towards the voice. The figure of Rostov appeared near the blank wall like magic. Neville reached for the gun in his shoulder holster, but too late, Rostov had a gun trained on him and fired it several times. <laughs> George Neville was spun round by the impact of the bullets. He fell among the dustbins. Steed and Mrs. Peel, hearing the shots, tore out of Steed's apartment. George! 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 Steed? Steed, is he all right? George. George, who, who, who did it? George Neville managed to gasp out. It. Rostov. Was. Was Rostov. And then he died in Steed's arms. Covering for their dishes. It's sunlight cleanness. What? Sunlight cleanness. A fresh, sparkling cleanness you've never known before. Why fresh? New sunlight liquid has real lemon juice. And sparkling? Sunlight liquid is concentrated. It's got the greatest grease cutting power to give you sparkling dishes every time. And new sunlight liquid with real lemon juice means real economy. Just one teaspoonful washes a whole sinkful of dishes sparkling clean. Sunlight clean. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user, like Mrs. Bodington. My wash is beautiful, and I'm very proud of it. There's nothing like cold water Omo. No dirt can stand up to Omo. Over a million housewives have proved it. It cleans best. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo.